Welcome everyone. Welcome to worship today with Yardley United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Barbara Siegford for those of you that might not know me. And I just want to say that I'm glad you're here with us. Some of you are on Zoom today, so you're going to be hearing me ask you to mute and unmute uh, your microphones. Some of you are joining us on Facebook Live. Some of you are watching us next week, but no matter what time it is that you're watching us, we just want to say that we're glad you're here. Thank you for joining us as we worship and praise our Lord. If this happens to be your first time with us, Jot a note in the comments or in the chat. We'd love to know where you're from and be able to say hi to you. But I'm going to ask you now to unmute and please join me in our call to worship today. We are loved by God. God hears and answers our cries for help. God shows compassion and kindness to us. May our lives praise and magnify our great and awesome God. We have come to worship the one well, now I'm going to invite you to mute and join us in our opening song today. The king of love, my shepherd is. Yet in love he sought 
going to be reading an excerpt of Genesis for you today. It actually is the end of the chapter. We are finishing a sermon series today. And so, again, it's been a pretty long one. So for those of you that have been here uh, through it, thank you for persevering, practicing what um, I've been preaching. For those of you that might be joining us for the first time, you get to hear the ending of the story before the beginning. But I would encourage you uh, sometime this week to go back into the book of Genesis. And I think it's the 37th chapter and read Joseph's story, because it is quite a story, and we have been learning a lot from him these past eight weeks. So we're going to finish it up today with Genesis 50, 15 through 26. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph saying, your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept. They fell down before him and said, we are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? And even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So I have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. So Joseph remained in Egypt, he and his father's household. And Joseph lived for 110 years. Joseph saw Ephraim's children of the third generation. The children of Machir, son of Manasseh, were also born on Joseph's knees. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die, but God will surely come to you and bring you up out of this land to the land that he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. So Joseph made the Israelites swear, saying, when God comes to you, you shall carry up my bones from here. And Joseph died, being 110 years old. He was embalmed and placed in a coffin in Egypt. Once again, once again, there is tension among the brothers. Our story this week opens with Joseph's brothers once again seeming to come up with some kind of plot, some kind of plan because they're scared. They're scared because their dad, Jacob, has now died. And they're afraid that now that Jacob isn't there, that Joseph will decide to get retribution. So they concoct a story telling them that this is what dad said, desiring their own forgiveness or if not desiring forgiveness, at least trying to avoid punishment. And so they keep telling Joseph that this is what dad said he wanted you to do. This is what dad said. You, this is how you should treat us. Once more, Joseph's brothers, they don't understand. They just haven't gotten it yet. And Joseph ends up in tears you know, as a response to their, their statement. And so then they quickly change their strategy and they adopt a stance of subservience and directly say to Joseph, we're here. We're here as your slaves. And Joseph quickly tries to calm their fears. And he says to them, he will not be the one to bring judgment upon them, but instead will continue to provide 
for them. The exchange presents a touching scene of how even forgiveness once offered can be hard to fully accept, especially for those who are still living or dealing with their guilt. It also shows how hard it can be for people to change old habits with their interactions between others. And even when one has opened oneself to receiving forgiveness, not only receiving forgiveness, but to extend it to others, it can be hard to watch when when you've told someone that you've forgiven them and you can tell they don't quite believe it. They don't quite believe it yet. And so you come up with different ways to let them know that, yes, you mean it and let's move on. It's, it's time to, to let this incident go. Another question that sometimes gets raised is when people intentionally do evil things, where is God in that? Where is God in that? Joseph's brothers had sold him into slavery and only his brother Reuben had spoken up against it. So sometimes it's hard for us. It's difficult to understand why things happen as they do. Even as believers, we find it difficult to understand why God chooses certain purposes and brings them about in certain ways. We don't understand why some people get the miracle and others don't. And I don't have the answers for us today other than to just remind us that God is God. God is God. And God acts in keeping with God's character and God's timing is different. God's timing is not always in harmony with our human timing. As Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians, he says, Now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we'll see face to face. Now I know in part then I shall be fully known, even as I have been fully known. At the end of our story, with all its twists and turns, God is at work. God is at work to bring about the redemption of Joseph and his brothers, to bring about reconciliation to this shattered family. God is has made a way for Joseph to be reunited with his family, to make peace with his brothers and to provide refuge for his extended family. And God is still busy inputting goodness in the midst of all the intentional and unintentional harm that we might do. Joseph believed that God was at work in his life and in the life of his brothers. And he offers one of the classical theological statements. He says, even though you intended me harm, God intended it for good. Story reminds us that God can and often does take those evil intentions and transforms them and uses them for God's purposes. As Christians, we have the ultimate example. The religious authorities and authority in the Roman Empire sought to put Jesus to death, crucified him, thought it was done, thought it was over. And Easter happened. And we celebrate the resurrection. God transformed the ultimate evil into the ultimate good. Now, I'm not here to say that God 
makes people do bad things. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that God can use those situations because bad things happen. Conflicts happen. Difficulties happen. But God can use them if we're willing. God can use them and help us turn things around. The other part of the story is also the reminder that of how much Joseph realized, how much Joseph realized that he had a part to play in God's plan. He understood that his responsibility was to be faithful. And on the basis of his confidence in the ways of God and his willingness to persevere in the face of adversity, Joseph was able to maintain his integrity. He was a person of honor. And as a result, he not only saved his family, but he pretty much helped save Egypt. Because he was willing to listen to God. And he had the workers save the grain during the good years so that they would have something to eat during this famine. Even until the very end of his years, as he's facing death, Joseph trusts that God will keep God's promises. And he speaks to his family of the exodus that is going to be happening. And he makes them promise to take his bones with them when God comes and tells them that it's time to leave so that he can be buried in his homeland, so that he can be there with them in the promised land. And we know that would be the next part of our story as we close the book of of Genesis and then would start in the book of Exodus. But I think another thing that we are reminded of when we read Joseph's story is to remember or to stop undervaluing ourselves and the difference that we can make. We also need to continue to deepen our relationship with Christ so that we too can live in the confidence of faith. And we need to hang on. Sometimes we just need to hang on because we never know when God is going to step in and help is right around the corner. We don't know how things are going to work out. And so until God tells us otherwise, because yes, there are times when the door closes and we move on, but we pay attention. We pay attention to to what God might be saying to us and we hang on. We continue to persevere. As we finish our series today, I want you to remember that no matter your age, whether you are just starting out and you're in elementary school or you are nearing the end of this life, God wants to use you. God wants to use you. Has God put a vision or a dream on your heart? Ask God. Ask God what the first step might be or what the next step might be. What might your responsibility or role be in helping to bring that to fruition? And remember, no matter where you are or where you might find yourself, you can still serve God. 
I just read a quote by someone named Douglas Adams that I just, I thought was quite appropriate. He says, I might not have gone where I intended to go, but I'm probably right where I need to be. Joseph's story reminds us that sometimes, sometimes we need to have the courage to take the next step. And sometimes we have to be willing to surrender, to be obedient, to be bold, to step up and speak up when necessary. And we need to persevere. Joseph had quiet confidence that he was in God's will, that the Lord had placed him in Egypt for a purpose. No matter what problems there are in life, keep your eyes on the Lord and not your present circumstances. I want to close with a, a poem called The Will of God, um, written by someone anonymously. But I hope that as you hear these words and let them soak into your being, that they might give you the confidence that you need. They might help deepen your faith. They might help you trust in God. It's called The Will of God says, the will of God will never take you where the grace of God cannot keep you, where the arms of God cannot support you, where the riches of God cannot supply your needs, where the power of God cannot endow you. The will of God will never take you where the spirit of God cannot work through you, where the wisdom of God cannot teach you, where the army of God cannot protect you, where the hands of God cannot mold you. The will of God will never take you, where the love of God cannot enfold you, where the mercies of God cannot sustain you, where the peace of God cannot calm your fears, where the authority of God cannot overrule for you. The will of God will never take you, where the comfort of God cannot dry your tears, where the word of God cannot feed you, where the miracles of God cannot be done for you, and where the omnipresence of God cannot find you. Amen. In just a moment, we're going to take just a couple of moments to, to relax, to breathe, um, as we enter into our music ministry time, time for you to just be aware of God's presence, to think about what you heard today, and to listen to whatever it is that God might want to say to you at this time. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows but Jesus. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Glory, Sometimes I'm up, sometimes I'm down. Oh, yes, Lord. Sometimes I'm almost to the ground. Oh, yes, Lord. Nobody knows the truth. I've seen nobody knows but Jesus nobody knows the 
what trouble I've seen. Glory, hallelujah. If you get there before I do, As we enter into our time of prayer together, does anyone have anything that they'd like to share today? If you are joining us on Facebook Live, we just invite you to jot something down in the comments and uh, see that folks will see that I get that for us. But does anyone have anything they'd like to, to share today? Anything going on? Quiet week, huh? All right. All right. Then I'm going to invite you to join me in a time of prayer. I'm also going to invite you to unmute, and we will then, uh, in a moment, join together in praying together the Lord's Prayer. So would you join me now in a time of prayer? Glorious and gracious and holy God. Again, and as always, you hear me say every week, we just want to give you thanks. We want to give you thanks for, for the technology that makes this happen, that allows this to happen, that we can be in all different parts, neighborhoods and communities and different states, and yet can gather together as the church to worship you, to praise you, to help do life together. We just give you thanks, Lord. And as we finish this series today, we just ask that you would help us continue to persevere. Because it's sometimes so easy to give up. Help us to pay attention. Help us to hear that little whisper or that little nudge that says, no, not yet, not yet, not yet. So give us the strength, Lord, to be able to hang on. And help us to pay attention, as always, in our sphere of influence as we go about our week Lord, I, I heard the story of a gentleman who took a different way home. He's not sure why, but he just went home a different way and he ended up finding a car in a ditch. And he was able to help the driver get out and call for help. And simply because he, he went a different way. So Lord, help us to pay attention because we never know when those interruptions, when those seemingly random moments or coincidences might actually be God moments. Lord, 
Lord, we, we know we'll get better at that as we grow closer in our relationship with you. As we learn to, to hear your voice a little better, as we spend more time with you. So help us, Lord, to continue to grow in our faith because we know that we're never done. That there is always more to learn. There's always more to share. Lord, we think of those, our folks who are in need of your healing touch. And we pray they would sense your healing presence upon them, even at this very moment. We pray for caregivers, Lord. We pray that you would give them the strength that they need to continue. We also pray that you would help them this week find a way to, to maybe take a short break, to find a few minutes for themselves to breathe, to relax, so that they can be renewed and refreshed, so that they are able to continue in the tasks that they're facing. We continue to to pray for all of those involved in our education system, Lord. As some kids are getting ready to go back to school and having to make those decisions about staying online or, or going back in person. And we know it continues to remain a difficult time for everyone involved. So we lift up the students and the teachers and professors and just everyone, the parents, help them to know what is best for their kids at this particular time. And we continue to pray for the miracle, for that cure of this pandemic, Lord. And while it might seem impossible, we know you are the God of the impossible. So we give ourselves to you once again this week. And we thank you for the gift of your son. As we pray together the prayer that he taught his disciples. Our Father, our Father, Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be, done, will be done, done on earth as it is in as heaven. heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 I wanted to, again, just take a moment in our service to... Thank you for your continued generosity. I wanted to share with you just one of the impacts of your generosity that even during COVID, you are allowing or making ministry possible. I know that sometimes it's not very glamorous when we talk about the budget and having to pay things like the electric bill. It's much more fun when you can donate to something, to something physical. But I want you to know that because who were able to pay our electric bill, that organizations like the Red Cross are able to be here. They've been here twice during the pandemic and they've collected at least 60 units of blood and are ready to come back in another month or so and do it again. You are making that possible with your continued generosity. And we just want to say thank you for that. And we want to acknowledge you for that. Also, 
love to just ask God to bless our offerings and to give him thanks and praise. So would you join me in our offering prayer today? Please unmute if you haven't already. Our offerings represent only a part of what we owe you. All that we have, all that we belong to you, oh God. As we give these gifts and ourselves freely to you, May, all May others know you your goodness and your love through our, our offerings. offerings. Amen. 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 The Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom, come to him and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us, his love is forever, faithful to the end of days. Come then all you nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Ring out the Lord's glory, praise him with your music, worship him and bless his name. Power he has wielded, honor in his garment, risen from the snares of death. His word he has spoken, one bread he has broken, new life he now gives to all. Come then all you nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Ring out the Lord's glory, praise him with your music, worship him and bless his name. Courage in our darkness, comfort in our sorrow, spirit of our God most high. Solace for the weary, pardon for the sinner, splendor of the living God. Come then all you nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Ring out the Lord's glory, praise him with your music, worship him and bless his name. Praise Him with your singing, praise Him with your trumpet, praise God with the lute and harp. Praise Him with the cymbals, praise Him with your dancing, praise God till the end of days. Come then all you nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Ring up the Lord's glory, praise Him with your music, worship Him and bless His name. Brother, but join me now for our benediction. Go now to serve the living God. We, we go, go and go with the God, God goes with us. With us. May all our work be done with faith. May all, May all our, our efforts be filled with, with love. love. Go and persevere with the hope that comes through Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us.